peace, good people. The little one and I just got back from a Target run while Felicia was setting up for the podcast. And I got to tell you about what I learned while I was there. Target is partnering with HBCUs. Shout out to Hampton, HU, to support the next generation of black talent. One of the ways Target is teaming up with HBCUs is through the Target HBCU Design Challenge, where HBCU students submit designs to be included in Target's Black History Month collection. And if you want to see the winners, check back during Black History Month. Well, Black History Month is every month, but specifically February to see the latest designs that will be featured in Target 2022 Black History Month collection. Celebrate your legacy. Invest in the future. Together, we are Black Beyond Measure. And be sure to visit Target.com slash Black Beyond Measure to learn more. It could be a dark world sometimes. Don't be afraid to be a source of light. It could be a dark world sometimes. But don't be afraid to be a source of light. Peace, good people. Peace. How are you feeling today? feeling really productive straight up (laughs) straight up straight up that's that's a good feeling and i acknowledge if anybody's having a day that doesn't feel that way because that's a beautiful day too Mm -hmm. thank you for tuning in to another episode of soul affirmations with felicia and kariga with kariga and felicia and the listeners couldn't do it without you thank you so much for holding space yes yes and the black love podcast network we fam now yeah yeah I want to not let that hold me. I rock at you. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) And I want to read from your text today, Fee. What you about to read? I think this is so fire. All right. We are reading from the Soul Affirmation text from others who are investigating grief's process. And we are reading from page 56. Mm. And it shares. When we share our stories and are open about our feelings, we create room for compassion and connectedness. We create room for reference. We create room for love. Mm. Fire. When we share our stories and are open about our feelings, we create room for compassion and connectedness. We create room for reference. We create room for love. Wow. I am sitting with that because I remember where that came from. Mm -hmm. And my arms are folded Right. It's it's funny. Um, I'm starting to pay more attention to my body's response to things mm-hmm. more than I ever have in my life. And I guess I feel like there's a relationship with what my experiences have been since Kamayu's birth and transition and the reconciliation that's had to happen with my body. Mm-hmm. But in this particular moment, my arms are crossed and it really has to do with me still figuring that out and being OK with that. I've vividly remember before doing our episode of Black Love, before Tommy and Cody came here, how unsure I was about talking about our experience. Mm -hmm. There were just a lot of fears. Mm -hmm. One of them was what other people might think. I was really, really concerned that people might listen to my story and draw their own conclusions that might have blamed me. I was afraid of that. Mm. Really, I was just afraid of everybody's brain on my experience. Mm. And that that caused me to feel like, okay, I don't know if I even want to say anything about this. Mm. Maybe I'll just keep it to myself. I remember the nerves, like all the way through the interview, right? And then I remember coming into now it's about to be aired. We knew when, well, we had an idea about when we were going to air on on own, right? And I remember that morning, Riga, I was in some deep grief about it. My jaw was clenched. I had tears that would just not stop flowing. It was uncontrollable. And I could not understand why I was having this response. I don't think I've ever shared this with you. I'm not sure if I have. And I was talking to my best friend, Dominica, about how I was feeling in that moment. And I just 
so afraid of what people might think when they saw our interview. Mm. I was so afraid what people would think Mm. that it really caused me to ball up my fist, clench my jaw. Like I even screamed. It was just so much, so much. She asked me, Felicia, you have to remember, why did you do this? I remembered it was for reference, Mm. right? Because I remember being on the side of looking for somebody who had an experience like mine so that I could see how they were getting through so that I could know, like, can, can I bear this? Because this is the most intense grief I've ever experienced in my life. So for me, that's where this comes from. Wow. And it took a lot of work and it still takes a lot of work, but I recognize now the importance of storytelling, the importance of sharing your story with others, because we found more often than not that someone knew somebody or had an experience like ours. Mm -hmm. And there just wasn't any room for the conversation. Mm -hmm. So I take a deep breath and I unfold my arms and I unclench my, my jaw and I release the balls of my hand. That That, makes sense. (laughs) That is so beautiful. It was beautiful to hear and see in real time. Thank you. And to be taken to that place in reference of where you were Mm -hmm. and me being able to see so much beauty that has come from you since then. And I think about what your writing created for us in today's opening. Mm -hmm. And I think, wow, she writes it so clear. I love this page. And to hear where you were when you wrote it or what it was stemming from the intense anxiousness around the brains and what they could think and what they might think. And when beyond what's thought, there is what's felt. Mm. Sharing for reference allows people to feel maybe less alone. I think about, we used to describe this place in grief as like a, like a speck in an ocean of despair. And Mm -hmm. what it would mean if you just saw a lighthouse or a buoy or evidence that somebody was there. Mm -hmm. Even in the depth of it, if you see somebody chopping through the waves, Mm -hmm. right? There is my hope that I can chop through these waves too. Mm -hmm. And if I can't chop through these waves, then it's hope that you see me and remind me Mm -hmm. or let me know Mm -hmm. or even add service when you can't say but that's why we share these stories of connectedness that's why this type of belonging is so important this is why this type of storytelling is so important and that's why that particular affirmation means so much to me Mm, thank you room for connectedness room for love i also think about you the author who gives us this place in guiding where you were and the idea of Being so unsure, the grief is that disorienting. You don't know what causes this. But to think that you are almost interrupted from arriving to this beauty Hmm. in fear of what you thought the other brains were going to think and how much more we know today. Hmm. I mean, it's, there's no variance Statistically, it's in your head, (laughs) right? But there's no variance around what someone thinks and what the outcome for you can be. Moreover than what is in your head, what is in your body. Right. That controls deeper than anyone else's knowing. Right. Your own knowing. Mm -hmm. But it takes so much work to get to those knowings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I'm grateful that you are the author and the example of the work it takes to get to the knowing. Mm. I have so much respect for that place you described as, I mean, I remember the anxiousness. I remember all the questions we had about how that could even work, right? Man. And then we saw the the radical gentleness that was extended toward us, in which that episode was a, mm-hmm. a very unique mm-hmm. feature length. Mm-hmm. And the room it created globally 
for other people. Man, oh man. I'm still getting messages about it. Still relationships growing and becoming. And I think that's so amazing Mm -hmm. that it created room. And when we got to the room and connectedness, many of us are still getting to and journeying to and through the love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The point of it all. What a journey. What a journey. What a journey to what a beautiful finding it is, but but that is not easy. Ooh, I think about what it means to have fins, fists clenched and jaws that are tight and almost wired and the inability to take that deep breath and the knowings at that point are, they're just not with you. Mm. Couldn't conceive this now. I couldn't conceive This global family that has become Mm -hmm. because each of us experienced a difference in expectation in our own families and we became family. Yeah. And we learn each children, each other's children's names. Yeah. And we speak their names and celebrate their birthdays and show up for one another. That was inconceivable. Kariga, you could not tell me I was going to have Instagram cousins. (laughs) Got Legit Instagram cousins, man. Come on, you got aunties out there. For real. They show up in they, real ways. And in real ways. Because the love we experience is real. Yeah. And it created room for connectedness. It created room for love. Y'all, Fee's been creating a lot of room for connectedness and love in her writing, I find. Mm. <laughs> I spent a lot of time with her book. It it has Seriously, y'all, it has deep reminders for me in my experiences, the angel parenthood experience is largely led by the voice of mothers. Mm -hmm. Fathers are still finding room or finding capacity to speak about it. So I find myself so much in your book. Wow. It's me too. In a way that I don't haven't expressed for myself. So when I see the pages. I just get to really reflect and I'm so grateful that your work speaks into me this way and I, you know, make it my duty that whenever I come across good fruit, I share it. Thank you. And I plant the seeds in another living being. So I share your words with the public people personally because they matter to me, but also I'm also representing those pages in a way that I haven't seen anywhere else represent my experience. Mm. So I'm grateful for your, your knowings, your affirmation and the way they show up for my life. And I also just want to take a second to really thank you for the way that you've shown up this week for me. Mm. Uh, Your guiding and your affirming words. It humors me to think that, you know, I could experience life the way it presented and then produce the affirmations and the knowings yeah, and the book and the album and even do workshops. And I talked to you some time ago about there's a deeper knowing. It's almost like go to the rudiments of it. Huh. So you know that all the things that are divisible by three, you'll find on this number line. Mm-hmm. So let me know the roots of the knowings. Yeah. And this week I just found myself in, particularly challenging spaces and the way you sat down with me and spoke very clearly and specifically into me, my gifting, my genius, my work, Mm -hmm. like I'd never experienced before. Mm -hmm. Like no one has ever spoken into me that way. No one could see that veil, that place of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And you, You just said it so completely and so beautifully. Your boy really felt like the reframe was positioned and I was ready to go do what it is I know I'm called to do. So in your writing, but also in the way that you live, in the way that you serve, in the way that you are, an affirmation for me, uh, an empowering reminder for me, I really appreciate you for that. Mm -hmm. I just feel like it's, 
such an honor to be able to support you in that way. You remember I used to be like, man, Riga, you offer me so much. What do I offer you? <laughs> <laughs> I used to ask him this it all the time. It was the funniest time. question for me because it... Because the ways that Kariga shows up in affirming me, they're countless. <laughs> and I always, I won't say I always, but I have question like, well, how, how do I show up for him in this way? I know I show up in other ways, but how do I show up for him in this particular way? And it's an honor to hear you name that for me. But more than that, like, you're deserving of it. And I hope that I get to speak into you more without it being preceded by a challenge, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. But simply put, like, Rika, I've known you since I was 16, right? And what I knew about you then, what I could see in you then, I still see today. You are not afraid to take up space, right? You know who you are, exactly who you are, where you come from. You know how to express yourself. You know, you are confident. All of these things, you're determined. What I loved most about you then was that you weren't afraid to express yourself. And I, creatively at the time, although I didn't value creativity the way that I do now, you were able to do that, right? You could not be silent. So to know this about you all of these years, and I think what happened with you in having to understand a deeper knowing happens to all of us, right? Where it is required to con this continual rehearsal that comes by having an I don't know. There, there's this intersection of. Well, I don't. I, I don't want to name it. Hmm. I don't want to name it for you. What I'm trying to say is that I know for me, I've had experiences that I, I may see something more often that kind of tries to play a game in my head and make me feel like I'm not doing the things that I am doing. It doesn't affirm me, if you will. Hmm. So <laughs> I feel like I'm just like talking in, in, no, in it's, circles. It's, but... it's, it's not. It's, it's all good. I just, I appreciate you seeing me. I appreciate you knowing that. And just as surely as I take space, I make space mm -hmm. for this, for the margins. Mm -hmm. But even still, in this work and being sure, like you have to know that you know, right? And you have to know, right. despite what it feels like when there's information you're telling you otherwise, right? you have to be a patient farmer. Mm. You have to be a patient farmer. And it isn't always about extracting, but the joy of planting, mm -hmm. the joy of creating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And from it will come residual fruit. Mm -hmm. So I'm not I'm not too deeply challenged by the fact that uh, I spent time in the not knowing. It's the cycle of getting the deeper knowings, mm -hmm. right? because mm -hmm. the truth has already existed, and we are coming into it, and we are standing firm with it. But when you speak into me, and when you pull back the layers of doubt it affirms in such a powerful way mm -hmm. and it was really one of the most uh, valuable times I've experienced in the marriage post Kamayu mm. like it's been you appreciate me we're not short on compliments but 
it hasn't been an easy road. And you really reframed that for me in such a beautiful way, and I'm grateful. So I've been spending a lot of time with your writing because it it's a true space that you're showing up for me. Thank you, Fee. Thank you. Thank you. And I feel like you you keep reminding me to go to my writings when I'm having a challenge. <laughs> oh, it's the little one, and she has officially sat up. <laughs> okay. When I am challenged, when I say I'm challenged, when I forget my own knowings, right? And I think they're really a gift to so many of us, mm. as, as do I believe motherhood is a gift to so many of us. Mm. So it, it would be very fitting that a mother's reflection is beautiful and, and fulfilling enough for humanity. Mm. I had a, um, a woman reach out to me asking if anything in my text applied to to her in losing a partner. Mm. And I was telling her, you know, where I wrote it from, but that you often affirm me and finding that no this can this can be applied to all different types of grief. It is the same way that uh, there is no us without the mothers who bring us in this world and mm. the perspective they share. Mm -hmm. Your mm. book feeds just like a mother does. Mm. Oh, wow. Rita, thank it's, you. It really is that clear and good for all of us. I maintain it. Mm. I maintain it because I know what I can see for myself, not just my own grief concerning Kamayu. I see the words in there that help me guide other ships when brothers reach out, mm. uh, when brothers feel connected. Belongingness is not specific to a gender presentation. No. It is a human need. Mm -hmm. All the layers of humanity, all the complexities, we all need to belong. Yeah. And finding belongingness in healthy ways is even more beautiful mm -hmm. because we'll find belongingness in any way it's offered. And sometimes that isn't as beneficial. Mm -hmm. But belongingness in a way that supports your wellness and your growth and your development is such a beautiful phenomenon. And your book offers that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I could thank you. I feel like I thank you every episode. Like, thank you for modeling this for us. <laughs> well, hopefully when we look back on it, not just as like a, a canon of work, but in a retrospect, they'll see the ingredients of a strong partnership, of a strong union, and the way we thank one another and the way we appreciate each other's company and learning from each other. Mm. I think that's a beautiful uh, blessing that we get to have in this marriage. Mm. And I I mean, that's what I was intending for when I didn't want to settle down. Right? Mm -hmm. I said marriage was building up, not settling down. Right. So if I'm going to build up, my partner has got to be somebody I want to talk to. Mm. I want to build with. I want to investigate with. I value their perspective. I like spending time with them. Like, how am I going to... Yes, Kamali. <laughs> how am I going to build with someone that I don't want to be around? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. How do I how do I call that building? Yeah. To me, that that is an unhealthy balance and a fearful settling down. <laughs> if if it includes not wanting to talk to the person you'll spend your time with, man. So and I'm I'm grateful we can talk and hang out and laugh <laughs> and cry and get better and investigate and be well and you can push me in runs and. And we can and we can create like ideas together. I also value you as a creative. Thank you. Your book has shown me like to just support you more and more and greater in your voice. You're creative. I met Felicia playing piano, y'all. <laughs> Remember that. And I'm grateful that when I forget the things that I know about myself, that you remember. That is important. You are my other me. <laughs> That's how it should go. The same reminders that you gave for me. I should be able to provide those for you. And we should be able to model that and provide it for our children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we can't model what we aren't. We can't model for them what we aren't experiencing and practicing ourselves. And then Kamali gets to look back and be part of this storytelling that's so important. Right? Like what is, what is her ceiling? What is her floor as it relates to her voice and the agency it deserves? I dig the opportunity to, to, to do this. And to do it right here with Kamali, imagining like what is her floor, what is her ceiling, and telling her story and believing that her voice belongs and has agency. In the short reference fee, 
I know we do this for reference, um, but I also want to add to the to the memories and the richness. She gets to look back at this. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And and none of us know the, the the course of that, the impact of that. None of us can. So thank you for your voice, for your leadership, for your investigation. Um, y'all like Felicia gave us this book in grief while carrying uh, I just can't say it that's just not that's just not little (laughs) that's not little thank you well I mean I'm grateful again for for this conversation yeah and I'm absolutely grateful for you the writing and the space it makes for me thank you to the listeners thank you to the community at large that makes space for us thank you for the families that are finding belongingness in these stories the connectedness that we have thank the black love podcast network family uh, and thank you for tuning into another episode of soul affirmations <laughs> With Kariga and Felicia. (laughs) And the listeners, our executive producers, Cody and Tommy Oliver, massive love. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Our producer, Crystal Hill. Thank you. Massive love. And edited by Alexis Amesqua. Thank you. Peace.